Let me tell you a quick story. There was this guy. Let's call him Jake. Jake was always self-conscious about the way he walked. He felt like everyone was watching him, judging his every step. He'd walk down the street, convinced that people were whispering about how awkward he looked. One day, fed of feeling this way, Jack decided to do a little experiment. He started paying attention to everyone around him. And guess what he realized? No one was looking at him. People were too busy with their own lives to even notice how he walked. It was a light bulb moment for Jake. He had been stressing over something that no one else really cared about. This realization ties directly into what we're going to talk about today. How to overcome self-consciousness and boost your confidence. So if you're interested, stick around. Hey there, I'm Nidhi, a life coach and hypnotherapist. Before we talk about how to stop being self-conscious, let's first understand why do we start being self-conscious in the first place? You see, when we're little, none of this stuff matters. Think about a baby. They're not worried about how they look or sound. They laugh, cry and make noises, soaking up all the attention. But as we grow older, things change. Maybe someone teases us about something or we have an embarrassing moment and suddenly we start to care. We start to worry about how others see us and that's where self-consciousness begins. It's not that we're actually being judged all the time. It's that we think we are and that thought alone is enough to hold us back. This self-consciousness often stems from subconscious beliefs that we have internalized over time. These beliefs tell us that we're not good enough or that others are constantly evaluating our every move. But just like Jake discovered, the reality is that most people are so busy with their own lives that they barely have time to notice us let alone judge us. And here's another truth. Just as we think everyone else has it all figured out while we don't, the reality is most people are still trying to figure out their own lives. Similarly, while we think we're the only ones who feel self-conscious, the truth is most of us are self-conscious about something. Now that we understand how it all starts, let's talk about the four simple things you can do to break free from this feeling. Number one, acknowledge your self-consciousness. Just like Jake, the first step in breaking free from self-consciousness is to actually acknowledge it. You've got to recognize when you're feeling self-conscious, whether it's about the way you walk, talk or anything else. By naming it, you take the first step towards dealing with it. Number two, challenge your negative belief. So start challenging these thoughts. Ask yourself, is this really true? Are people actually paying attention to this or is it all just in my head? Most of the time you'll find that the answer is no. People aren't watching or judging you nearly as much as you think they are. They're too busy thinking about their own lives, just like Jake realized. Number three, expose yourself to triggers. Now here's the hard part. Actually facing those situations that make you feel self-conscious. And I know it's not easy, but it is necessary. So start small. Let's say if you're self-conscious about speaking up, start by saying a sentence or two in a group. If you're nervous about meeting new people, Try introducing yourself to one new person. The more you do it, the easier it gets, just like building a muscle. And number four, practice self-compassion. As you go through this process, remember to be kind to yourself. Everyone has their insecurities and everyone makes mistakes. Treat yourself with the same understanding and compassion that you'd offer a friend. One great way to do this is by creating a self-compassion journal. Never heard of it? It is just simply write down positive affirmations about yourself and your abilities. This can help boost your self-esteem and counteract those negative thoughts. Over time, this practice can transform the way you see yourself, making you less vulnerable to those old self-conscious feelings. The story of Jake shows us that self-consciousness is often about perception, not reality. By recognizing your self-consciousness, challenging the beliefs behind it, facing the situations that trigger it and being kind to yourself, you can overcome it. Remember, the world isn't focused on you, as you might think. So go ahead and focus on being the best version of yourself without worrying about what others might think. Take that first step today. Embrace who you are, imperfections and all, and know that you're enough, just as you are. Until we speak again, may you have the courage to be yourself and the confidence to share that with the world. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care.